The market in the association is flowing like water to open up the 2023 summer, and with a trade potentially involving Damian Lillard heading to a contender on the way, we could be just getting started. The Phoenix Suns, Boston Celtics, Memphis Grizzlies, Washington Wizards, and Golden State Warriors are all going to have a different look to them next year after pulling off the moves in which they did. You're about to find out everything you need to know, including the biggest winner and loser from the opening week of off-season blockbusters. Stay tuned. Just 13.8% of my audience is subscribed though, so please subscribe. Back to the content. Before getting to the biggest winner and loser from the opening week of trade happenings, you'll find out the logistics behind every blockbuster that's taken place so far in terms of what's involved in each deal and why they happen. Before a Brad Stevens middle of the night shocker from Wednesday, on Monday, June 19th, Phoenix GM James Jones would go deep into his pocket to acquire Bradley Beal from the Washington Wizards, adding yet another All-NBA player to this top-heavy Suns roster. Even though ESPN graded the Suns deal for Bradley Beal at D, many on Twitter claiming they'll have no bench next season, and several NBA YouTubers saying the deal makes zero sense for Phoenix, let's be real with ourselves and keep the facts straight. Phoenix only had to give up Landry Shamit and an aging Chris Paul in order to receive an all-NBA player in Bradley Beal. Problem is, Beal is far from an elite defensive player, at least he's proven to be, and has missed a combined 74 games over the last two years. On top of that, Bradley's cap hit will be a ridiculous 57 million by the time he's 33. In fact, the combined cap hit alone this upcoming season for the Valley's big three of Booker, Durant, and Beal exceeds that of several 15-man rosters as a whole. Phoenix owner Matt Ishbia will pay Devin, Kevin, and Brad $129 million, at least $8 million more than the entirety of Houston, OKC, and Indiana's rosters. A steep, costly price to pay, to say the least, which makes the deal seem to not make sense financially speaking on the surface. The Washington Wizard legend's scoring prowess is bona fide considering he's posted eight seasons of scoring at least 23 points per game, two seasons of posting at least 30 points per game, and nine seasons of posting at least 17 points per game. With Chris Paul either absent or inconsistent when Phoenix needed him most this past spring, Beal will certifiably upgrade the Suns offensively, the question marks will conversely lay regarding his ability to stay healthy and stay in front of his matchup. Durability-wise, Bradley's missed a concerning 74 games over the last two seasons, which includes missing an even more concerning 121 games over the last four seasons. That said, it's not like he's been injury-prone throughout the entirety of his career. For example, the three seasons before these last four, albeit in his mid-twenties, Beal missed merely five games combined, which included playing in all 82 for both the 17-18 and 18-19 season. Regarding Brad's defense, and I don't think it's necessarily fair to judge what Beal did on a bottom-feeding Washington Wizards team, defensive rating marks often come down to how good your team is on this end as a whole, and Washington has been at the bottom of the league in this category for the last half decade. In a winning situation, you would only expect Beal's motivation level to increase, which is when the true test of his defensive capabilities will be challenged. Also, don't forget the Suns didn't have to give up a lockdown defender like Josh Akogi in this trade for Beal. Josh defends the same guys that Beal does. In addition to the hustling perimeter clamper that Akogi is, don't forget the upside that Devin Booker has on this end, who also defends the same position as Bradley. In fact, during the 2021-22 season, Booker led all shooting guards in defensive rating. Of course, there's risks involved regarding cap space and his fit within the system of high-volume bucket getters who require hefty field goal attempt numbers that'll inevitably take away from Bradley's shot volume. However, given the fact that in addition to all the star power this Phoenix team has to offer, they didn't have to give up TJ Warren, Terrence Ross, Cameron Payne, or Torrey Craig, Beal's days of carrying to no avail seem to be complete, a welcome sight for the 11-year veteran without a doubt. Keep it locked right here to see if Phoenix is the biggest winner from the opening week of trades.
Moving on to Marcus Smart being dealt to the Memphis Grizzlies in a three-team deal which is going to send Chris Stapps Porzingis from the nation's capital to Boston. Also involved in the swap, Tyus Jones, Gallinari, Muscala, and the 35th pick in this year's draft are all headed to Washington. Additionally, the Celtics are going to receive Memphis's 25th overall pick in 2023 and a 2024 top four protected pick via Golden State. With many Celtics fans dreaming about a universe in which their team won Game 7 for a consecutive year against Miami, they woke up to the news that Brad Stevens shipped off their DPOY, granting the bad boy Grizzlies with the veteran mentorship they were looking for while giving them a night and day better shooting guard to space things out and lock down the perimeter than with all due respect, Dylan Brooks. The Grizzlies now have the last two defensive player of the years and a player who adds a much needed sense of communication and toughness in Smart. For Boston, this is a very questionable decision given Smart was your best perimeter defender, a top leader, and a third option everyone liked. Porzingis we talked about in my last video right before this trade went down coincidentally when comparing him to Victor Wembanyama. We talked about how KP was a failed, hyped up lottery pick who was, similarly to Wemby, a foreign stretch big. Brad Stevens took a big risk by giving up a franchise staple for an unproven, injury prone talent, and I think it was a shocking move. He did receive the 25th overall pick in the deal, in addition to a top 4 protected 2024 pick. But this is a Boston team in win now mode, and rookie late first rounders aren't going to help them too much. Playing devil's advocate, and this Celtics team needed to shake things up after losing in the conference finals. However, they were literally on the brink of getting right back to where they were in 2022, being the NBA Finals. This Tatum, Brown, and Smart core was one win away from doing something no team in league history had ever achieved. Questionable move, I could see it paying off, but I'd give the W to Memphis in this trade. Then there was the most recent shocking trade, which consisted of the Warriors unloading Jordan Poole's four-year $128 million contract to the Wizards in exchange for Chris Paul. JP will get the opportunity to be the trusted number one point guard for the first time in his career, which is literally the perfect fit for him as the NBA champion, who was a sixth man for the dubs in their 2022 title run, will have a lengthy leash in terms of the minutes and responsibility given to him which he's never been accustomed to. The Wizards are now in a full rebuild mode after giving up Bradley Beal, and it's a position where taking risks isn't the worst possible option. For Golden State, they're also sending a protected 2030 first rounder and a 2027 second rounder to the Wizards. Chris Paul was potentially going to get bought out by Washington after being waived by Phoenix, but he should provide solid backup minutes for a fellow legend in Stephen Curry. CP fits in better with the veteran cast of Warriors, who are obviously in win-now mode, with Bob Myers previously being halfway out the door before his departure. In hindsight, the massive pool extension may have been a tad short-sighted. Therefore, Mike Dunleavy being able to unload the contract almost immediately is a solid W for Warrior fans as much as I am a Jordan Poole stan. But you just wish you could have gotten a bit more for Poole, given he was again a big time piece to the championship run, and seeing him be the scapegoat after what he went through last year is disappointing. This was a player you were just trusting to be the next face of your franchise at point guard after Curry's departure, and now he's gone for practically nothing, albeit you won't have to worry about his contract and you do get a guy with a lot more poise and experience who fits in a lot better in CP. So a shocking blockbuster that should give the Wiz an exciting up and coming talent, and in fairness, the win now veteran Warriors a better suited piece to their championship equation. The biggest winner so far from this trade frenzy out of anyone, I think is the Memphis Grizzlies. Yes, you gave up Tyus Jones, who was a great sixth man, a great piece, but chemistry is everything in this league, and especially with all the drama they're going to deal with in the midst of Morant's suspension, acquiring a connector like Smart was massive. Additionally, 
This gives the Grizz an elite starting five at full strength, with Morant, Smart, Bain, Triple J, and Steven Adams. In terms of the biggest loser, I think every team did solid here, but if I'd have to give you one, it'd be the Celtics. They shook things up, which may pay dividends, but I just think Smart was a really important piece. Celtic fans, let me know if you agree. That's about it for now, but many more trades could be on the way. Keep it locked on DFlow Hoops for more. 